Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning and welcome to week four of our Rooted series. We've been talking about the ways in which God wants us to be rooted in who He is so we can live out our purpose. This week, I want to talk about being rooted in love. That ultimately, where our roots are and what we're drawing from determine what comes out of our lives. That what a tree pulls up out of the ground that it's planted in impacts the fruit that it produces. Today, I want to talk about how important it is to be rooted in love. We live in a world where Love is defined in a lot of ways. Many would talk about love as if it's a feeling, but truth be known, love is not about a feeling. Sometimes love feels good and sometimes love feels bad, but love is actually an an action. Love is a verb that comes as a characteristic of God's personality. That love is a part of who God is. That love exists because of the character of the Creator. Ephesians 1 says it this way, Even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in His eyes. That God's love began with the existence. That it was love that motivated God to create. It was love that motivated His desire to send His Son. That love is, was, and will always be a part of the character of God. As we live our lives, it's important for love to be the thing that we draw from because as we go to live out the Christian life, many people confuse the Christian life with Christian behavior. And the reality is that the behaviors we're trying to live out don't come natural to us. They have to come from drawing from a superficial love that comes only from God. He goes on to say, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. That God's character was joyful over adopting us into his family. That the offer for you and the offer for me is to become children of God. Even more powerful than that, One of the great illustrations of love in the New Testament and in the time that Jesus was was walking the earth and here and present among people that was adoption. To take in one who wasn't connected and to connect them and love them. Adoption is used over and over in Scripture not to refer to some second-class parenthood or second-class childhood, but actually In Jesus' day and age, one truth about adoption was that you could disown your own biological child, but when you adopted someone, you, you not only were committed to keeping relationship with them, but you also were promising an inheritance. And the scripture says that God 
predecided. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. As we choose to be rooted in love, we have to predecide that the fruit that we want our life to show is love. The first purpose of my existence, the first purpose of your existence is not necessarily to love, it's to be loved by God. And being rooted in that love will then produce fruit that comes out of our life and love coming out of our life. That if we really want to love others, which means putting them in front of ourselves, it, it means caring about them deeply, that comes first by being loved by God and experiencing the love of God. That our very first and foremost purpose for all of existence in this life is to be loved by God. That God's creation of man had the intention of loving his creation. Jude 1.1 says this. He says, this is a letter from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. I'm writing to all who have been called by God the Father who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. That the relationship God offers to us, the relationship that God offers to give us is one that comes from love and care. Many over the years have taught religious ideas as if there's a God whose love wavers. And God's love never wavers for us despite our relationship with him. However, receiving him and having a relationship with him and joining his family allows us to be adopted into his love. So my first purpose is to be loved by God. And the first thing that God calls me to do isn't some grand action or behavior. It's to enjoy a loving relationship with God. Many of us bring along some baggage from childhood or relationships in our past. And, and we think of love through that lens when in reality, the lens that we need to view love through is the one of a God who, while making us, while being over us, while being above us in his holiness, chose to love us and to be willing to sacrifice for us. Paul said it this way in Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Paul, a man who had been enslaved by religious behavior and religious action and being right, Paul has this encounter with God. And as he's talking to the early church, he says, Dear friends in Rome, God loves you dearly. And he has called you to be his very own people. Paul's telling the people from all different backgrounds and all different places and types that they're loved by God. He begins his letter by describing God's calling to people to be loved. It's often that we, we love from our relationship with him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, What an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us, that we should be named and called and counted the children of God, and so we are. Now, God has us as his own children. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 and 19, Paul says this, I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. What Paul is saying to the people, to the early church in Ephesus, is that in order for them to be who God wants them to be, in order for, for them to live out the calling God gives for them, that their roots need to go deep into the soil of God's love. That we will draw from God's love in order to live out our faith. And he says, and may you have the power to understand as God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love really is. Paul doesn't just settle for that you would understand the love of God. Paul describes the love by its width, its length, its height, and its depth. He says, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is so great you will never fully understand it. That, that there's never a point in which we kind of say, oh, God's love, I get it. That God continues to show us his love over time. His love is wide enough to be 
everywhere we go, that God's love isn't just in a temple or a tabernacle or a church building, that God's love for us is in our daily moments of awake or sleeping. God's love is with us in the moments when we're praying, and God's love is with us in the moments that we're sinning, that his love is wide enough to be everywhere, and it's long enough to last forever. It's, his love is not a temporary thing. It's deep enough it's deep enough to handle any circumstance or thing or circumstance that you go through that you can be assured of this, whether you're in prison for your own crime, stuck deep in an addiction, stuck in a sin you can't get loose of, that God's love is deep enough to find you there, that his love is for you even there and high enough to overlook our sin, to overlook our mistakes and our sin and our choices that God's love it is capable of all of these things that might otherwise, from a worldly view, make us disqualified because people will often not love us deep enough to stick with us. People will often not love us wide enough uh, to love us when we're not around or when we can't do anything for them. But the love of God is such that His love is for us when we are powerless. So what changes happen if I stay aware of God's constant love for me? What, what changes happen in my life if I allow myself to most definitely and be centered on the love of God? Number one, I feel accepted rather than ashamed. That most of us, if we're honest, if we look back through our lives and, and we look back through the experience and the relationships of our life, when we think about those who have loved us and others, sometimes what we experience is Love that, that came and gave us, and because of that relationship, we wind up with some shame based upon our behavior or based upon the brokenness of the relationship. And when I stay rooted in a relationship with God, I don't allow those weeds to grow up in my heart and my life because the, the reality is that God's acceptance is a motivator for my action rather than being ashamed. You know what I've learned over the years? Nothing happens when we feel ashamed. Shame is not a good motivator. When a parent consistently shames a child, it may make the child feel horrible. It may ultimately make the child feel horrible about themselves. When a parent tries to guilt a child constantly, what, what it does is it begins to create a brokenness in that relationship. But when we're rooted in the real and authentic love of a God who loves us deep and wide, and then we, we begin to remove the shame that paralyzes us and be reminded of the acceptance of God. It's the acceptance of God that allows me to move forward. In Romans 5 verse 1, it says, By faith we've been made acceptable to God, and now because of our Lord Jesus Christ, we live at peace with God. That while I may not be able to live in peace with everyone, while I may not be able to please everyone, that God has given me acceptance through Jesus. That the death and resurrection of Jesus that took my place on, on the cross, that took my deserving place because of my actions and my behavior, that, that that allows me to live at peace. If God says his chosen ones are acceptable to him, can anyone bring charges against them or can anyone condemn them, Paul says? No. Number two, if I'm rooted in love, then I'll be bold in bringing my needs to God. I'll be confident in my moment of struggle, pain, sin, or whatever I'm going through, that even though the world may have come against me, even though my own actions have come against me, that when it comes to God, He chose love, that His love wasn't based on my performance. And because God chose love and that's who He is, I can go to Him in any situation or place. And when I know that about God, then I'm also able to go out into the world and know that regardless of what happens there as I take God's love out to the world, that I can go to God and bring all of my needs to Him. Romans 8, 14, 15 says it like this, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you should not be like cowering, fearful slaves. You should behave instead like God's very own children adopted into His family calling him father, dear father. And since we are his children, we will share his treasures for everything God gives to his son, Christ, is ours too. That love actually is propelling. Love is moving. 
that being rooted in God's love will not just merely make us stay comfortable. It will give us the freedom to move into discomfort for the sake of this love that is needed by the world. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says this, Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So many are afraid when it comes to God, they've been taught about a God who's looking to strike them down or knock them down because of who they are. But the truth is God sent his son to lift us up as heirs of his son. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence. We don't have to go into the presence of God in deep fear. We don't have to go into the presence of God with the idea that God wants to strike us down or that God's love is wavering. We can go confidently that his intentions are good for us and that his love for us exists. Number three, I have peace and pain that I don't understand if I'm rooted in God's love. If I'm consistently embracing and rolling in the love of God, I can be in the middle of a life struggle and be confident of God's goodness. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. If I'm rooted in the love of God, if I'm confident in the love of God, if I'm confident that God is looking over me and after me and that His plan is good for me, I gain the courage to take some risks. One of the key marks of good parenting is giving your kids the confidence to go learn, the confidence to make some mistakes. Often we can overprotect our children and remove every difficult circumstance from their life and make sure that they never make any mistakes and think that's good parenting. But the reality is, while we are to look after and we are to protect, sometimes it's our love that allows our children to make mistakes and then learn from us. Learning from the love of God will give me the ability to go forward knowing that God goes with me. To know that I'm taking his love with me, that, that as I go out into the world and love others, that God's love for me has not wavered. It gives me confidence to share the truth of his love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says there's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. Number five, when I'm rooted in God's love, I can worship instead of worry. There have been days in my life where it was easy to worship. When my children were born, it was easy to look and, and look at them and see the handprint of God and to feel and experience the deep love that I had for them and what God had done for us to allow us to be parents. And, and it was easy to worship. There have been days in life when things have been rough and when challenges have come our way and grief of loss and all sorts of things that, that, that have made it more difficult to worship. But something that I have noticed, it's often in our moments of struggle where our great moments of faith are lived out as we worship while we don't yet understand. Knowing God's love for me allows me to worship when I'm in the middle of worrisome situations. Because worship is the antidote to our anxiety and our fears. Worship is the antidote to, to our, our stress. Worship is what happens when I am rooted in the love of God. Maybe it's as simple as writing a reminder on your mirror that you are loved by God, that God loves you, that he sees you, and he's aware of your circumstances. Knowing that will allow you to worship him instead of worry. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, 34 says, don't worry, this is Jesus talking. Don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Don't worry about the insubstantial temporary things. He will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Don't worry. 
You don't have to worry because God, God wants us to act and God wants us to try and God wants us to struggle. And by all means, this isn't a passage being like, hey, just lay around and say over and over and over again, God loves me. And then, and then do nothing. The reality is love propels, but God wants us to know along the way, we don't have to worry about whether or not he can meet our needs. We don't have to worry about whether or not he's going to take care of us. Romans 6.13 says, give yourselves completely to God since you've been given new life. Your life is in better hands when it's in the hands of a loving God. You may have days when you don't love you. You may have days when the people around you don't love you. Your life is better in the hands of a God who always loves you. John chapter 1 verse 12 says it this way, to all who believed him and accepted him, Jesus gave the right to become his kids. What's your next step? Maybe today it's to receive the love that God is offering to you. Maybe it's to receive the love of, of God through Jesus. A God who would look down upon you and your struggles and your hurts and even your sin and choose by his character to be loving. I mean, the whole framework of your existence would be different if, if the passage had said, for God so hated the world that he brought and wreaked havoc and destruction and eternal damnation on everyone forever. And if he's God, he gets to determine his character and his personality and who he is. But God, when he looked down upon the world and when he created the world, God chose love. Your life is better when it's rooted in love. The people around you's lives will be better when you're rooted in love. You will make a permanent difference when you're rooted in God's love. When daily you remind yourself, I am a child of God. I am loved. I am accepted because of Jesus. Many people want to make a great impact on the world. But I believe the greatest impact that we can possibly make is love. Love is patient. It is kind. Love is generous. Love serves others when they don't deserve it. The world is not changed by our opinion. It's often changed by God's love. And the way that God plans for the world to see and experience his love is from his church. We can't afford to get this wrong. Are you rooted in God's love? If you're watching this morning and you want a relationship with him, it's as simple as receiving the love that he's given. The gift has been given, the opportunity made to step in to be a child of God. And God is a benevolent God who loves you, who wants the best for you, wants you to receive the, his love. Christian, what is flowing out of your life right now? If it's not love, if what people around you aren't experiencing and the world that you live in, the people you work with, the people you live with, the people you do your hobbies with, if it's not love, then it's really a result of not being planted deeply in God's love. And what needs to be, what shame needs to be removed or what lie needs to be removed in order for you to be rooted? What weed has grown up in your life of bitterness and hate or deceit that needs to be removed so you can live rooted in God's love? If you live a life rooted in the love of God, you won't have to worry about the impact of your life. It will flow out of the love that comes out of your life. I love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages. You can view the messages for Sunday morning. And you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give. With online giving at Bethel.us slash give. In our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. 
Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.